I'm often asked, why are Citroen brakes so good? Everyone knows they are, everyone makes comments about, oh, if you drive a hydro-pneumatic Citroen, the brakes, they'll put you through the windscreen. They're really hard to get used to. There's no feel, all the things that go with it. You see them being driven on TV, on various programs, and people laughing and joking because the brakes are so sharp. They are, but why are they? Do you know? Well, if you do, it's probably pointless watching this, but if you don't, I will try and tell you, explain why the brakes are so sharp, because although they are conventional brakes, they are completely not conventional brakes. Yeah. But why are the brakes so different on cars like this? What gives? Well, for a start, we're only talking about green-blooded cars, cars that run on LHM, plus the odd DSs that came in before the LHM came in. I forget what they run on, but someone will put it in the comments. Cars that run LDS systems, so the C5, C6, they are excluded from this. They play no part in it because they have peasant uh, uh, conventional brakes. This car and all its cousins, all its brethren that run on the LHM have different brakes to the car you drive, unless you drive one of these. What's so different? Does it have big cogs under here with teeth that mesh into it and just make it lock up completely? Has it got aircraft brakes underneath it? Has it got an anchor? No, it has a brake disc. There's a brake disc and there are brake calipers either side and there's discs on the back as well. In fact, the only hydromatic Citroen that doesn't have discs all round is the DS. It's got drums at the back, but all the others have discs all round. So this has discs, that's totally normal. Here we have a brake disc and caliper. This is a completely conventional brake disc and caliper on a completely conventional car. It's actually a TVR V8S, but although that might not seem very conventional, for the purposes of this, it is very conventional because it has totally conventional brakes. In fact, these brakes are from a Ford Sierra. Cars don't get much more conventional than a Ford Sierra. What's the difference? Well, the BX has discs on the front. Are they special discs? No, not really. It has pads. Are they special pads? No. Calipers, do they work differently? No. No, they don't. There are two sides to braking on cars, friction and hydraulics. So the friction side is kind of the discs, the pads, the act of slowing the car down, not what's controlling it. The hydraulics, well there's your clue, because if you're looking at a car that's got a full hydraulic system, it's the way the brakes are operated. It's not the brakes themselves, it's the way that they're operated, the way they're controlled. And the easiest way to show you that is with a glove. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's with a glove. So I've got my glove. I know, it'll make sense in a minute. I have a pen. And on each finger, I'm drawing what is supposed to be a wheel, which looks nothing like a wheel. It looks more like some sort of cult symbol. Right, it's a five-spoke wheel. Just picture that it's a wheel. Now the wheel represents the brakes. So I'm gonna do one on each finger. That one's a six spoke, that one's a mess. And this one is a TSW Venom. Yes, it doesn't matter, they represent the brakes. Now the circuit on your car, on a conventional car, is sealed at all ends. There's no opening in it. If there is, you're gonna have a crash. So the circuit is effectively that. So this glove is inflated, right? Let's not confuse matters. All the, the only reason this is inflated is to replicate the brake fluid in your system, okay? I mean, if I could have used water if I was being clever, but I'm not clever, I would use air. So that's your brake system. This is your brake pedal. These are each of your wheels. So what happens in your car is when you push the brake pedal, you displace fluid from the cylinder that is behind the pedal and send it to cylinders that are not behind the pedal, that are on the wheels. I mean, it's not quite as simple as that because there is already fluid there and there's already fluid there and there's fluid in other places, but basically that's what you're doing. You're reducing the amount of fluid in one place so it will instinctively move to the path of least resistance, which is on most cars, well, all cars pretty much, the front brakes. And it works like this. Here's your foot, here's your brake pedal, there are your wheels. If I push the pedal, the fingers will get bigger and longer. Hopefully, yes. 
And that's what you're doing. So the harder you push on your brake pedal in your car, like if I push a little bit, they move a little bit. If I push hard, they move a lot. And basically, that's what's happening. The harder you squeeze your brake pedal, the harder the brakes get squeezed. It's proportional to the amount of force that you put on it. So the harder you push, the more fluid you're pushing from the master cylinder. What's a master cylinder? I'll show you what a master cylinder is. We're back to the TVR. This is a master cylinder, here. So this thing here is a master cylinder and it's got pipes coming out of it. And these go off to different brakes on the car. On the top is a reservoir that holds the fluid. So when you push the, the brake pedal, there's a piston inside here. This is full of fluid. The piston pushes up the cylinder, compresses it all and forces it into these pipes. These pipes carry on around the car and wind up coming through a hose into the caliper. Once the fluid has gone through this pipe, it is forced into the caliper. The caliper has a piston inside, a cylinder with a piston in it. That piston, you can just see the edge of it here, it's pushing against this pad. There's a pad on the opposite side. When this piston pushes against this pad, it squeezes it against this disc, and that makes it harder to turn the wheel. It slows the car down. And that's it, that's how they work. Under the bonnet of the BX, however, and other Citroens, you will not find a brake master cylinder at all. Nothing. Normally they would have it behind the pedal on the driver's side, but some cars have it on the left-hand side, even if it's a right-hand drive car, and use a linkage to go from one to the other. But in this, nothing. Not at all. Well, what actually gives is the car is being clever. Unsurprisingly, this car has a central hydraulic system. It has a high pressure hydraulic circuit. People always look at these cars and go, oh, it's a hydro citron, it stands for hydropneumatic suspension. <laughs> no, not really. Um, it actually, really, it just means hydro, as in hydraulic, which is stupid because there's no water involved, it's oil, so it should be oleo pneumatic but whatever um, there's no it, you know it has a hydraulic circuit that runs around the car the suspension runs off that and it is the primary thing that runs off that but other things run off it as well in this car it runs the suspension the steering and the brakes the steering is power assisted steering so it's pretty conventional but it is conventional power assisted steering it's got rack and pinion pinion valve it works the same as a normal car it's just fed by the green hydraulic high pressure fluid that runs around the car the suspension well we'll probably have to do that in a different video but the brakes also run off it so basically what happens when you start the engine in this is it pumps up the fluid spins it up to high pressure, sucks it out of the reservoir, spins it up to high pressure and sends it off its way into little pipes all around the car, loads of them. There's like one, two, three, four, five there for a start and they go all around the car and they go off and they perform magic. And they also go to a valve called the dozer valve. Now unfortunately, in order to be able to see the brake dozer valve, you need to remove the engine, like this. The brake dozer valve is located behind there. So you've seen the dozer valve in the engine bay, because I've taken the engine out. And you can see the back of it up there. Two bolts holding it in. And all that happens when you apply the brakes in one of these cars is you push this. And the brake dozer valve makes magic happen. Now this car, of course, has no hydraulic pressure in it. It's not running but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference because this is pretty much all the pedal travel you get. It's, that would have the car stopping quite, quite nicely. That would have you going through the windscreen. That's just free play at the top. That literally is as much travel as you've got. The easiest way to picture in your head how these brakes work is by actually making it very simple. The dozer valve is like a switch. The car already has a circuit of high pressure flowing around it all the time, uh, about, up to about two and a half thousand PSI at times, and the dozer valve just takes some of it and sends it to the brakes. So the brakes are fully powered brakes. They're not power assisted brakes, which would be a brake servo, so a brake servo that assists your foot compressing the fluid in a master cylinder. These cars have a fully powered brake system. All you're doing with your foot is opening and closing the tap. We can use the glove to demonstrate. 
So I have my brake system again. The only difference is this time, the pedal isn't here, it's somewhere else. The pedal is this trigger here. And I have a supply of high pressure hydraulic oil, but in this case, air. And all you do in a Citroen when you're applying the brakes is opening a switch. You're pushing a button and allowing fluid through. It's just like this. And you go through the windscreen. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. Here's the sciencey bit. So this is a brake dozer valve. This here is just a spacer. Uh, you could see these two studs sticking through on the tomato's bulkhead. But basically, when you push the brake pedal, it pushes this. And you can see that that is your travel. That's it. So what's going on in here? Well, I'm not going to take this apart now because I have other things to do. But basically, what's going on is you have four circuits, which is confusing because on a brake master cylinder, Strictly speaking, you only really need three. You have four for a reason. You have one of them going, now I think this is the way around they are, but you'll probably correct me if I'm wrong. You have one here going to the rear brakes, one here going to the front brakes. So you would think, oh, so where's I have a high pressure input, and then I have a circuit going to the front and a circuit going to the rear. It gives me dual circuit brakes. No for two reasons. Firstly, this car has two separate inputs to the brakes. So this, this is the high pressure input here. This is directly off the high pressure circuit. This one here is not. So where does that come from? That one there comes from the rear suspension. Why does this one come from the rear suspension, you may be asking. And if you're not, can you just ask yourself so this makes sense? The reason this is coming from the rear suspension is because these brakes are entirely dual circuit. They are also entirely, the rear ones are entirely proportionate with load. Not ride height, load. And in the next video, the follow up to this one, we'll bleed in the brakes on the back of the tomato and I will show you how they work. But for now, I'm, I'm gonna end it. And that's basically it. Uh, that's it for part one, that is the basics of how the brakes work. I'll go into more detail on the second video. There'll be three. The first one, how they work. Very easy. It's like having an air compressor and a glove. But yeah, that's all it is. It's a system the car already has high pressure fluid going around it, more pressure than you yourself can make with your foot in a conventional car. And all that happens when you push that valve, that tiny little valve, is it opens and the fluid goes around the circuit. And that's it. And that's what bites the discs with the pads. The calipers do all that work. It's as easy as that. The second video will go into the complexities and the devilishly clever bits of this system because that seems maybe, oh, that's not like that clever. It's not that different. Oh, you wait. Because the BX has a party trick. The XM has a party trick. The Xantia has a party trick. The CX has a party trick. The DS and the SM, Yeah, yeah, they've got quite a few party tricks with the brakes and it is mind blowing if you're like me and you get excited by stuff like that. So I shall follow it up with the second video and in the second video, I'll explain what some of these party tricks are and even bleed in the brakes on the back of the tomato because they need bleeding in because they're, they've got air in. We'll see you on that one.